is we need to design supporting questions that align with our compelling questions. So our compelling question that we had come up with when we were we were looking at the kindergarten standards, you know, the and the theme of the kindergarten um, standards is myself and my community. And we really want to look more in depth at this term of culture, just because we know it's in the standards and we know that culture, we want kids to explore the culture that's found in their community. And in kindergarten, it's about their classroom community, their school community, their immediate local community. And so now that we have our compelling question of how does culture impact my community, we now need to look at it and say, okay, what are going to be the supporting questions that are going to drive a student's investigation or their understanding of this compelling question? And so when we looked at the compelling question, you know, part of the characteristics in, in determining and evaluating your compelling question is whether or not it can be answered from multiple perspectives. So, um, I think a good place to start would be to look at the standards, the ones for kindergarten and say, okay, how does, you know, what are the various um, standards aligned discipline specific ways that we can um, drive student investigation, the compelling questions. So what are some discipline specific supporting questions? And then as we kind of design those, we will um, go back and evaluate each one using the four questions on the screen. Does that work for you? That works. Perfect. All right. So we'll start off with civics, just because civics is first in the document. It's easiest to look at first. Okay, so our compelling question is, how does culture impact my community? Okay, so let's take a second and look at the standards. What do we think? I mean, I kind of think that um, if we're really looking at, you know, how does culture impact my community? What about this one? Yeah, I think I, I think that one is the best. There are others that could work, of course, but I like them thinking about local symbols, local events, and how that contributes to their their culture. All right. So then, so what we can do is we can pull this over right now. We just pull over just because we want to, you know, because one of the things that says there on the, the questions, it says um, we want to make sure that it uses discipline specific terminology because we do want kids to really get grounded in good discipline specific age appropriate um, terminology. Um, so I'll pull the standard down just so we can reference. So mm -hmm. um, what might be a good supporting question lines with how does culture impact my community so um i'll start and then we can edit okay um, i'm toying between and there's multiple ways to start this so we we could do how or what um to start it but Let's, go ahead i was just gonna say we may want to go with a what here so that they get some specificity that they could utilize later in support of the larger how question. Okay, that works for me. Um, what? Would it be like what local? Would it be symbols and events? Let's start with events first, um, because I do think at this, especially in kindergarten, um, we want to make sure that there's just there's just something in my gut that's saying that you know we can talk about state symbols at another time we can talk mm -hmm. about cultural events in this time um, like i just think that's helpful for students so what local events what if we said like what local events are important in my community or yeah that was wanting you to say to my community but yeah. to my community Either one. Right. I think that communicates more like the to my community works better with our compelling question. OK. So I think that works right like what local events are important to my community if you depending on what region you're on the state right your yeah. festivals your. Um, uh, events would be influenced by your culture. How do we feel about that one? I, I do think, and, and again, I 
trust your judgment here, but I do think we could have what local symbols and events are important to my community. And just, just as an example, um, in, in my local community, there is um, like a memorial to veterans and there are multiple flags. And so mm -hmm. that would be something that I think students, you know, every day they pass that, that's something that's well known and that defines um, part of the culture of, of that community. And depending on the community you're in, um, so what symbols and events are important to my community? So I can see, all right, I think that works. I yeah, that because works. if it's like an apple festival or, you know, if it's something then, well, that symbol of the apple and the corresponding event define part of the culture of that community. Okay. All right. So let's ask it. Let's go through the questions to ask it. Does it okay. align to inspire investigation of the compelling question? I think so. I think yes. understanding the symbols and events in your community and understanding how it's a reflection of the culture of the community is a huge um, component of understanding the culture of the community. Does it provide students with knowledge that they can synthesize to answer the compelling question? I think so. I think I kind of just went through that, right? Like this idea that they take the bigger and they get a larger understanding, right? Um, can it be answered through the use of the concepts and practices of each social studies discipline while well, we're doing civics? So that's the <laughs> first part. And does it use discipline specific terminology? And so I think at this level, um, because understanding and this grows in the document, it progresses in complexity, but this idea of, you know, symbols and what they mean and why they're important, um, I think to me, while we're not doing like, you know, higher level vocabulary that kids might see later on, like civil discourse, I do think this is appropriate discipline specific investigation for kindergartners. Okay. And I feel like, again, I feel like students need to hear the language of the standards and be familiar with that vocabulary um, because it is a, a progression. Okay. So the next one we'll do is economics. Oops, if I can type economics. All right. Pull it that. So let's look at the document. Okay. So, um, so I think again, like kind of like what you said before with civics, that there are a lot of examples that can work. I kind of like this idea of identify places and communities that provide goods and services, because I think sometimes you can really see your culture in that mm -hmm. as well. For sure. Okay. So we'll pull this over again just to anchor our thinking in the to make sure it's standards aligned. Um, I mean, I almost want it to be like this. Yeah. Um, what places provide goods and services? Oops. What do we think? Now, yeah. my only qu my only question about that is, is that aligned to the compelling question? Well, I think so. Again, they they will have multiple things that they're brainstorming in relation to that. But when they get to the compelling question, then I would think they would want to either be supported, you know, and scaffolded by the teacher to make connections between. Well, you have all of these. Which ones are most important in characterizing our community? And obviously, you wouldn't use that terminology with a kindergartner. But which places allow them to see? Um, what makes up our community. Right, and I think about just my local community, like there are just different shops and there's international grocery stores and all of those things that you can, um, you know, if, if I'm thinking about like an international grocery store, okay, so that place provides goods and services. Why is that particular business able to, you know, sustain and thrive and it's be a reflection of the culture of the you know the diversity in the community sure and i think too it could allow some of them to see that different places in the community are being revitalized in a sense and so maybe you know there is a, there's a lot of effort to revitalize main streets and so i think that could lead to interesting conversations as well because um, you know that tends to shape culture okay all right, so let's evaluate it with our questions. So does it align to and inspire investigation of compelling questions? I think we've kind of already done that, right? Like we've already talked about the alignment, okay, you know, with teacher, um, that we do think that it can um, 
that it is aligned and that with teacher scaffolding, teach, students will be able to make those connections. Um, does it provide students with knowledge they can synthesize? Yes, this idea that um, what goods and services are in their community it can be a reflection of the culture. Mm -hmm. So I think that does that. Um, can it be answered through the concepts and practices of each social discipline? Yes, we got economics here. And does it use discipline specific terminology? Yes, because it's talking about goods and services. Yep. Okay. Right. All right, our next one will be geography. Okay. I mean, this is easy. It's need to go with that culture of communities, right? Yes. But? Well, I just wonder if that's like answering the question with the question, you know, like I wonder oh, if. Oh, yeah. If it's going to be like, what is the culture of my community? Yes. Because yeah, well, like, oh, even like the physical and environmental characteristics shape culture. So like that last one. Um, but, but again, I'm, I'm willing to. Well, I think the thing that might be important here, so there's two things, like one, we're going through this discipline specific. So like we've looked at all the different ways that culture, um, how do I say this? Like, like we started with civics, we started with economics, but when you're actually designing your lesson plans and your unit plans, it might be more appropriate to start with this term because kids don't understand culture. Sure. And so I think, you know, while we are doing, so I guess my, my vote is to, um, use this standard, but I think if you were to design a unit plan on it, um, I think you would start here because kids have to understand what culture is. Um, and because then you can even do something, you know, because to understand what culture is doesn't necessarily mean you understand how it impacts your community. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah, that does. That helps me. Okay, so on this, I'm going to just put our um, our standard right here. And is it something like, do we say something like, what is culture? I think so. Okay, so I think that works because I think that sound, sets the foundation. Um, does getting at what is culture, does that get at the identifying and describing the culture. That's what I was wondering. I mean, it definitely gets at the identify. They're going to be able to, in essence, define it. Um, so I'm wondering if we could open it up a little bit so that they're describing something. Hmm. So what is culture? Could we say something like, what are key factors in contributing to culture? And I know that's not kindergarten language. <laughs> so, um, okay, say that again, because it made me think of something. So can you say so that again? So what, what are key factors that contribute to the culture of communities? Or what makes... I would makes say, what, so... I forgot the first part of what you said, but I would say, what are examples? Okay. Um, I don't know if that's. I still, I like how you had initially, like what, what is culture comma? I mean, can you have two and one? So what is culture and what are examples of culture within the community? What is culture? What are examples? But is that is that what that standard is really getting at? If I'm describing the cultures of community, so obviously for someone in kindergarten, they're looking at their school, their local community. So let's process that a little bit. Like how would what would we be looking for with that question beyond mean, just the definition? Do you mean with the standard or with the question? With the question. All right. So let's let's do this first. Let's go back and look at um, the disciplinary clarifications. Okay. 
just so that we can kind of anchor our thoughts in that. Okay, so that so that's that's a good entry point. I like where it says, for example, the culture of a student's classroom might include the value of respecting others. I got this it. value might be reflected in a rule. That's not it, is it? I think I think that. Because before we were saying what is culture in general, so we were looking for that definition and clearly they would have to know that definition to be able to answer that second question. But then they would also have to have conversations around again those. The cultural values and and beliefs and the climate within you know their school within their community. So to me, the second question does a better job of encompassing both parts of that standard. And I think, and so again, I think, all right, so because then the other thing is, does it inspire investigation, the compelling question? So I think, I, th I think so. So I think if I was to do, so when engaging with this in the classroom like there does have to be this kind of foundational discussion of culture right so it says what is the culture of my community so that's where you can identify it so like if you look back at that disciplinary clarification kind of like what you were saying like you know a culture of a student's classroom might include the value of respecting others this is reflected on um you know, rule on the wall that says takes turns when speaking so then a student can understand well um you know this they can identify what culture is and they can say, you know, describe it. Well, this is how it appears in my classroom. And I think that's foundational to understand, OK, well, you know, here's what culture means. This is how it can impact. This is this is this is this is the definition of culture. This is mm -hmm. this is an example of how it appears wherever. Yeah. And then, you know, you look at it broader because you're really saying, okay, well, how does culture impact my community? Well, culture will impact it in a variety of ways. I think it works. I think so too, because I feel like I feel like the discipline specific question is, I mean, you could answer that with a definition in a list, whereas the compelling question, you're having to mm -hmm. consider the implications of that list. Right. And so then and then, you know, the whole point of a compelling question is this idea that's bigger and requires synthesis. So like this geography standard, this geography discussion is the foundation for understanding, OK, well, like what are the symbols and events and then yes. what are the places and goods? And OK, all right. So then our next one is history. And we'll go back up in the document to look at the history standards. OK. I mean. There's lots of choices here. Mm -hmm. I kind of I sort of like the second one. This one traditions found in communities over time. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you could you can. I mean, the cool thing is, is that this compelling question, you know, we're going. Um, how do I say this? We are doing this in each of the different disciplines, but you can also do more than one, in this case, history standard and exploring mm -hmm. culture. You know, I mean, you can talk about the, you know, we'll focus on this one, this particular one, the compare traditions for what we're doing right now, but it's also, you know, kids can also look at how did their community change over time? How did, you know, um, and then that's related to me to, you know, the identify the cause and effect of an event in the community, you know, well, why do you have this festival, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So you have multiple lenses, you can you multiple even just history, what ways you can look at it through history, which is nice. OK, so it says. Um, OK, so compare traditions found in communities over time, including those from diverse backgrounds. How would we start this sentence if it says like we want to make a supporting question and the question the standards asking to compare mm -hmm. how would we start this question so and again this is just a thought so, so my thought would be that initially 
you would have to have your like what traditions um, are found within the community or what traditions or what community traditions I'm trying to bring in that over time but then ultimately getting to where we're saying like how are they alike how are they different so that they're really comparing I know that's the that's why I asked that initial question. Like, how do you if the question's asking to? I mean, because like, you know, if you're if you're gonna sit in front, right? You're like, okay, kids, let's compare. But then, like, how do you? What's a great way to put that into a question? Well, so should this be a how then? Like, how how have community traditions? Can we say traditions found in my community? Yeah, that's fine. How, How have traditions, traditions found in my community? Do what? And that's the thing. So there was another one that was dealing with change over time. Here, compare traditions found in communities over time. I mean, we could say, how have traditions found in my community? Develop, no, not develop is not a good kindergarten word, but um, because the, the ultimate thing here is that we're asking kids to compare traditions, so let's right. let's so. I mean, it how, could well, just be how are traditions found in my community alike. And different. Power traditions, would you say? Found in my community. Alike and different. Mm -hmm. That we said. Um, I had something to you. How? I don't know if this one will work, but how do traditions in my community? compare I think that's tied the most to the standard but so is it that we can leave it cuz when do kids have to know like cuz the idea is the idea that when kids compare, that kids have to know that when you're comparing, you're talking about how they're alike and they're different? Yes. And then when does that, I mean, that starts in kindergarten then, right? Yes. So is it? I mean, usually, for example, in the reading and writing standards, it will say both terms, like compare and contrast. But if it's just one, um, the general association would be that, yes, they're telling us both how they are the same and how they are different. Okay. So if we leave it like this and we say, okay, so history, the supporting question is, how are traditions found in my community alike and different? Then when we go to implement this question with kids, part of our lesson design would include those things like, okay, well, let's talk about how the traditions in our community have changed over time. And in investigating those, we would ensure that we're talking about groups from diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think that we need to embed that over time somewhere into that question? I mean, the whole the whole notion of a tradition is that it is something that is right that it, 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 over time. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the 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 general definition of it. So, um, 
I think it's okay the way it is. The question is supporting question. So long as when we go to implement it, we ensure that the what students are engaging with to because again, the, the supporting questions aligned to the standard, but at the end of the day, our foundation is the standard. Yeah. So this question, this the supporting question can drive the investigation, the compelling question, but what students do must be rooted in the standard. So, you know, how are traditions found in my community? alike and different, well, when I go back and I look at that standard, I'm now, okay, well, I've got to make sure that, you know, traditions, we're talking about the community over time, which is part of the de definition of tradition, but that we are also including um, those traditions from diverse backgrounds. Because at the end of the day, what the kid is going to be doing is they're going to be looking at how does culture impact my community? And you, so in investigating that, they would have to consider those diverse backgrounds. Do you think and again, you're 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 probably about ready to. <laughs> no, I, this, this is what makes so it better. What if we More say, what if we said something like, what what traditions found in my or what do traditions found in my community have in common, and then how how are they different? Or is that do you want it to be bound into one singular question? I like it being one question and I think like when you said that I was like when, when you said what you just said my brain said that my role as a teacher is to scaffold student understanding to get to that question so that in in, in going through this the quite the larger quite the I mean the supporting question would be how are traditions found in my community alike and different we would talk about those traditions and we could say okay how are these because you would also you you would do um you, you would look at you would you would look at it very specifically and like okay how does this tradition compare to that tradition and then you would build your understanding of it so i like the idea especially if and i mean it i mean i like the idea of it being the one question because eventually you know this idea of comparison is that students should be able to know that when you say compare it's both things so i'm okay with this okay and then, of course, as we get into the implementation and the designing our unit and lesson plans, this is always going, to, I mean, this is flexible, right? Like this is our, this is, you know, we start with the standards, we start with the concept, the theme, and then when we're designing our work, we will always have to check for alignment. So as we go through, if we feel like this question needs to be modified based on how the lesson and unit plan is breaking down and meet the intent of the standard, we can always go back and modify the question. I do think that question aligns really well with a compelling question. I think if they're truly able to think about those things, then they're going to be um, equipped with knowledge to utilize in the synthesis of the compelling question. Okay, so are we okay with the history question? Yes. Okay, so let's and I know we've we probably like in our discussions already done these questions, but let's let's do a double check. Let's check okay. our, our question. So does it align to and inspire the investigation of the compelling question? I think you just answered that. Does it provide students with knowledge they can synthesize to answer the compelling question? Yes, because mm -hmm. traditions are a part of culture. And this again is very foundational to that understanding of culture, mm -hmm. right? Like there, there are traditions in your community that's a part component of culture. So the hit the traditions is the foundation to that larger idea of culture. Um, can it be answered through the use of the concepts and practices of each social studies discipline? Yes, because that's we're looking at through a history lens right now. And does it use discipline specific terminology? Yes, because traditions is one of the terms that's found in the history strand that will again grow in complexity. It's kid gets older and more sophisticated in their study of social studies okay all right and again once we start designing our unit plans and our lesson plans we can we will always go back and check alignment and revise as needed um, but i think this is a pretty good foundation for the work what do you think i agree yeah thank you